My name is Will. Uh, I have a quick talk for y'all, tips and tricks to get through an AMP design review. So uh, feel free to listen if this sounds interesting, half listen or not listen. Those are all cool. Sweet, should be quick. Let's get going. It's a big picture of my face. I'm a software engineer on AMP. I work on the runtime and AMP for email working groups. So if either of those sound interesting or you have questions, please talk to me afterwards. And my GitHub uh, username are those six letters that don't mean anything. Um, right on. Uh, so maybe it's first worth briefly covering what are design reviews. Design reviews are basically these weekly public meetings happen on Wednesdays um, across as various time zones. So you can find one probably that works for you, wherever you are. Um, and we sit down and talk about uh, large changes, proposed changes in AMP and talk about their trade-offs and their merits and um, alternatives. Um, so we do this for changes that uh, both external, you know, um, and internal. Um, and we, it's, it's public, so uh, we welcome all of you to come join if you have a change that you want to propose, or even if you just want to listen in and you see one um, on the agenda that you're interested in. Um, you can find these uh, under uh, GitHub issues on the AMP HTML repository. Uh, under the label type colon design review. Um, and you'll see a link to like the uh, video conference um, uh, to join. So on Wednesdays, yeah. Um, so first question is when do I actually need a design review? Do I need to need design review for everything? Um, so here's some rules of thumb. Uh, if you're adding a new AM component, um, generally a good idea to get that design reviewed. Um, and one example of this recently is uh, AMP Geo, which is a uh, geolocation uh, uh, component. Um, allows uh, you to show slightly different uh, user uh, UI to uh, users from different locales, um, specifically uh, countries I think is currently supported. Um, and if you're interested in the design review issue, I linked, uh, well, I didn't link, but you can see the, the, the issue numbers next to each of these sub bullet points. So another uh, um, change to consider uh, to bring to design review, uh, a small quote change to that affects multiple AM components. Um, and one example of this is we recently launched a new default loading indicator instead of the not so pretty three dots in a row. Now it's this prettier circular spinning icon that you guys might have noticed. Um, so this is a you know relatively small UI change, but it affects many different AMP components. So, and this was actually designed um, um, quite thoroughly with a, uh, a UX designer. Um, so if you're interested in the details of that and why we chose the design that we did, you can check out um, that Git. Uh, GitHub issue number. So another example would be a large change to a single component, right? Small change to multiple, or a large change to a single one. Um, one example of this is a dynamic, dynamic resizing an AMP list, um, which so AMP list has a very particular set of rules under which the component can change size because of the risk of content jumping. And this was a proposal to shake things up a little bit in the next version of AmpList. Deprecation is also super important. Um, we actually, AMP actually has a formal deprecation and versioning policy um, in a markdown file called versioning policy. Um, and one of our engineers recently uh, deprecated most of the AMP course protocol, it's, it's sort of uh, somewhat annoying AMP flavor to the uh, browser standard course policy. Um, realized this wasn't actually necessary anymore, uh, 
uh, made everyone's lives a bit easier when implementing endpoints um, consumed by AMP pages. But just an example of something that um, was worth bringing up in design review. Um, and we also um, announced this uh, uh, in various channels too, which is a standard deprecation policy. Sweet. And the last one I would suggest is our changes to AMP constraints. So we're all well aware of the things that AMP allows you to do, probably more aware of things that AMP does not allow you to do. Um, yeah, for example, the limit on uh, the size of the CSS you can have per AMP page, uh, specifically 50 kilobytes. This one is somewhat related to that. Um, we recently-ish uh, enabled inline styles via the style attribute, um, which uh, opened up uh, a few uh, more convenient use cases. But because this was you know, a validation change, and had some implications with, for example, do we include the uh, style attributes in the calculation of that 50 kilobytes? Should each style attribute have its own limit, et cetera? Uh, we discussed this in design review. Cool. So when do you not need a design review? So. Uh, Mentioned large changes to single AMP components, smaller changes to single AMP component, sort of incremental features that don't break backwards compatibility is uh, a good example of this. So uh, there's an intent to implement out right now, I think, uh, for this seek to action for videos, which I don't believe is slated for design review. Um, and I think that's reasonable because it's you know incremental feature on a already published component. Um, similarly, adding a vendor integration for analytics or ads or similar generic components. Which is, um, and here's one example, WebEngage, which I think is a analytics vendor. Um, there's still this intense implement issue, which highlights the change that's proposed, but doesn't need sort of the uh, extra step of going through this public design review meeting. And then, of course, bug fixes and documentation documentation changes, generally uh, small enough to not need a design review. Cool. So, I promised tips and tricks. So, I think probably the most important thing is to find uh, the working group that's relevant for your proposed change, and then find someone on that working group. Uh, in that working group to work closely with. Um, now, you all are probably familiar with the AMP working groups now. There's a bunch. These are all the icons I could find. I put them on a slide. These are not all the working groups. Um, here's a list of one, a few working groups that you might want to work with. Um, they're all pretty self-explanatory, I think, except for caching, which encompasses validation as well. Um, so yeah, um, on your intent to implement or your feature request, you can mention um, any of these teams and try to find someone to uh, get f early feedback. Um, you can find all the the complete list of working groups on that link. And one thing I learned is that you have to actually join the AMP project organization to add mention the teams. Otherwise, they won't get notified, um, which would be a shame. So the second tip is getting feedback early and often. So design review is a great public place to get um, a diverse uh, set of feedback. Um, but I'd say ideally it wouldn't be the first time um, you know, someone that's working closely with AMP has uh, heard of your feature. Ideally, you've already been talking to the working group, have a particular collaborator that you're working closely with, and they're already you know, pretty familiar with um, the, the proposed feature. Um, this will help um, 
de risk, I guess, the, the design review. Um, and hopefully, it can just um, be a way to consider edge cases instead of needing to overhaul your entire design, for example. So, yeah, sort of an application of uh, fail fast here is what I'd recommend. Basically what I just said, yes. So the third one is um, embracing AMP's design philosophy. Um, and what does that actually mean? So AMP has a list of design principles. I mean, a lot of these probably make sense um, or are familiar to you. There's actually a markdown page that lists a bunch of these verbatim, and you can see more of them at this link. Um, but here are a few that are important to keep in mind. Um, user experience is prioritized over developer experience. This is a rule of thumb. That's no, not true and strictly true in every single case, but um, that's one of the things that AMP sort of prides itself on, right? It's like, say, user first web framework. Um, and I think most frameworks, web frameworks today are uh, mostly focused on developer experience. So concretely, this means you know um, only do things if they can be made fast, right? Performance and uh, user perceived performance are paramount. Um, solving things on the right layer, right? So that means um, keeping the user's device resources um, in mind, specifically CPU and network, and trying to solve things. Um, on the server, if possible, or on the uh, AMP cache, too, since that's a super nifty tool that AMP has at its disposal. Um, next thing, uh, don't break the web. Yeah, it's, sounds like an obvious one, but it basically means um, support graceful degradation, um, including things like uh, what happens if JavaScript is disabled or um, you know, uh, there's network failure, et cetera. Um, and I sh mentioned it briefly, but yeah, don't forget about the AMP validation and cache implications for whatever future that you're, you're, you're proposing. Um, the last one I added is a corollary. Um, generally, I think uh, extra brownie points for generic APIs, um, for example, AMP analytics and AMP add which you know take uh, vendor configurations via JSON, um, as opposed to um, vendor-specific extensions. So uh, one concrete example of this are our video components today. You know we have we, we do support AMP YouTube and um, Brightcove and sort of a very long list of uh, video components, and I think that's fine. Um, but um, Yeah, the, one of the reasons why AMP is fast, specifically for analytics and, and ads, is that um, we can have a single component do all these things, um, reduces the number of uh, bundles that the page will need to download, and it offers this common API, which is a nice DevX win as well. And the last tip is be persistent and don't give up. I know the GitHub repository, at least from my point of view, super noisy, a lot of stuff going on. Um, and that means there's a lot of chances for things to get lost in the mix or fall off our radar. So if you file a feature request and you find yourself thinking, why is no one responding? Um, please uh, don't feel afraid to ping on that issue, ping individuals or teams. Uh, first, friendly and gently, and if that doesn't work, very forcefully. Yeah, it'll definitely get things back on our radar. We won't take offense. Um, there's just a lot of things for us to juggle, and um, yeah, persistency is good. So yeah, hopefully you won't feel like this. Let's see, stock image I found of a distressed guy on the laptop um, with these, you know. Tips in mind, hopefully this will be how you feel. Happy stock image. Cool.
that's all I had. Uh, thanks for listening. Hopefully it was useful. <laughs>